Uh, this question is related to control limits for control charts. So what we have here is we have the control limits and the center line for the uh, R bar, uh, R bar, sorry, R chart and the X bar chart, or actually the X bar chart and the R chart. Just as a sort of a quick remark, what does that what does that mean? Essentially, what we have in uh, control charts is that we'd have the center line here, CL, through the middle. Uh, up at the top we would have the upper control limit okay and down at the bottom we would have the lower control limit and essentially what would happen here is that our control chart would go somewhere around like that through the oops yeah somewhere around the uh, uh, like that so uh, what we're going to do here is sort of my page just sort of sc uh, scrambled up there uh, what we have here is x bar uh, 542 550 and 558 so let's just say for argument's sake what I'm looking at here is the control chart for the uh, or the x bar chart the center point here is 550 up here we have 558 that's the upper control limit and down below we have 542 Okay, now something similar for the R chart is that the control, the lower control limit is simply zero. Okay, and and so on. And the center line is um, eight point two three six and fifteen point five zero four. What we are going to do here, first off, is uh, what we have to do here is find out what sample size is being used. Now that's the batch size. Okay. Um, uh, does it, what happens in statistical process control is a batch of about five or six, three, four, five or six. You don't know a, a small sample is assessed, and the control uh, charts are based on the summary statistics of the measurements for those batches. But you need to know what size the batch is. So what we're going to do here is actually just go to the next page I have here. So the process mean uh, x double bar plus or minus three times s bar. Uh, C4 square root of n. What we have to do is essentially find out what n is square root of n. Okay. What our our best line of attack is using the process range. Okay. R bar D4. I'll just actually write it there again. R bar D3 capital D3, and we're actually also given R bar and R bar D4. Okay. That is zero. Eight point, uh, what is it? Eight two three six, eight point two three six, and finally uh, sixteen point five zero four. I'll just check that, make sure I'm correct. Yeah. Okay. So that is what we have to work with so far. Okay. Now, how do we find out what it is? Essentially. Uh, we have to what we have here at the last two columns are the d three correction factors I just sort of uh highlight a small sample of them there uh for um batches of various sizes okay so if the batch size is five let's say d three is going to be zero and d four is two point one one four okay so how can we find out what these D3 and D4 are? Well, you can probably be able to tell very quickly that D3 is necessarily going to be zero because we have a zero here. So R bar we know to be 8.231. So D3 has to be zero. So that's a clue. Okay, so we actually can get rid of the batch size of seven. So just as a remark, we have R bar and R bar D times D4. So let's use that. So what I'm saying is, um, let's just do this on a new page. My, sorry, there we go. R bar uh, equals 8.236. R bar times D4 equals 16.504. Therefore, D4 is 16.504 divided by 8.236 working that out you would get 2.004 okay so that means that the batch size is actually in this case is actually 6 
the batch size is 6. Okay. So that's important. So what we're going to do now, that was actually first question answered. Okay. The next question is, estimate the mean of the standard deviations S bar for this process. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go down here and look at this here. So X bar, X double bar is, let's go back up here, that's 550. Plus or uh, C4, uh, N is the square root of 6, okay. C4 we know to be the, uh, uh, we know that the batch size is 6, so we just pick out the the value for C4 from where row was equal to 6, so that's 0.9515, uh, okay. So n is equal to 6, and you get those two values there uh, accordingly. Okay. Now, this is important. The upper and lower control limits are uh, x bar plus or minus 3 times s bar c4 over square root of n. Let's just go back uh, up to our where we drew the control chart. So this is a, is a distance of 8 away. The upper control limit is a distance of 8 away from the mean. The lower control dis uh, limit is also a distance 8 from the mean. So that is to say that 8 is whatever our plus or minus is. That is equal to 3. So I'll, I'll be a little bit clear about that. 542 and 558 five, are the upper and lower control limit. This corresponds to x minus 3 times s bar over c4 square root of n. And 558, that corresponds to x double bar plus 3 times s bar over c4 square root of n. Okay, so necessarily 8 is equal to 3 times s bar over c4 uh, times the square root of n. Okay, so 8 equals 3 times s bar over 0 0.9515 times the square root of 6. Okay. So what we have there is an equation with one unknown, okay, so it just requires a bit of calculator work to actually uh, finish it off. So I'm just going to pause and just get out the answer there. I make uh, S bar to be 6.2151, okay, you can just check that yourself uh, just to see if you get that answer, but it's just essentially rearranging this formula here, this formula to just beside it. Rearrange that and solving you should get s bar equals 6.21 uh, 51. Okay, so let's just see what's the question. Estimate the mean of the standard deviations for this process. So that's that one done. So n equals to 6 for the first one. s bar equals 6.2 Two one five one for the second one. Now compute the control limits for the process standard deviation for the S chart. So let's go down to our control limits here, and let's do that. Okay. Uh, so what do we need? I'm just going to sort of clean this up a bit. This is the one in particular that we need to look at. S bar plus or minus three times C five over C four S bar. Okay. So this should be straightforward enough. Uh, remember that the batch size here is equal to six. Okay. Let's go down here. So this is the two values we want. Again, 0 0.9515 and 3.076. So let's just get make some space down here. Yeah, let's do it there. So S bar is 6.2151. Okay. Uh, the control limits are uh, 6.2151 plus or minus three times. Uh, C5, well C4 is 0.9515, uh, S bar goes in there again, 0 0.62151, okay, and just bear with me a second while I just double check what's, yeah, 0 0.3, sorry, this one here, 0 0.3076, 0 0.3076. Now, bit of calculated work, but there's an important remark to be made in a second. I'm just going to pause it and calculate that. Uh, the answer is 
would work out to be something like 6.2151 plus or minus, this is what I get, 6.0276, okay? And that would work out to be 0 0.1874 approximately to 12.2427, okay? That's the actual answer. Now, this is just important. Suppose you get a negative value here. That's not impossible, okay? Just the way these numbers work out. Suppose you get a negative value there sometimes. You would replace it with zero, if negative. Now, it's not here. But uh, in general, if it is, if it, it do, if it does turn out to be negative, you can't have a negative standard deviation. So if you if whatever you're working with gets a negative standard deviation, you just replace it with zero. Okay, for control limits. Okay, so that's that one done. That's grand.